In a previous video, I showed you how to make your own electric longboard. On that video, I used an electric speed controller, ESC, as it was delivered, but it caused a few issues. In the past few months, I have tweaked my VESC electric speed controller from Benjamin Vedder and want to share my findings. First off, I want to say that the VESC was the most expensive part of my e-board and still is. Depending on where you buy it and which version, the price is between $100 and $190. And if you want to build a dual motor e-board, then you'll need two VESCs. On the VESC, you can read which version you have. In order to configure the VESC, you'll need a software called BLDC tool. This enables you to read and change the configuration on the VESC using a USB cable to a computer. The BLDC tool is available for Mac and Windows. If the official download links are unavailable, then you can get it for free at Inertion website. Just place it as an order and you'll receive a download link by email. Installing it is straightforward. Then connect the VESC to your computer using a USB cable. Make sure the motor, receiver and the battery are all connected to your VESC and powered on. On the computer, start the BLDC application and on top right corner, press connect. At the bottom, you'll see a message about your firmware version and if the connection is succeeded. If you get an error, then check all the connections and make sure the eboard is powered on. After connecting, press Read Configuration in order to load your current configuration on the VESC. If you want to change the settings back to how it was delivered, then press Read Default Configuration. Here I'm switching between my current configuration and the default configuration. And the first window is also the most important one. It contains the values for acceleration, brake and about your battery. Under current limits, I've changed the values for motor max, which affects torque and maximum speed, motor min for braking, and I've set the battery max and min at the maximum allowed by my BMS. Under voltage limits, these are my settings. You'll probably notice that the maximum input voltage is much higher than a 10 cell battery pack, which is the one I'm using. I've changed that after discussing it on electric skateboard.builders because when it's set at 42 volts my braking doesn't work when battery is fully charged but only when discharged under 40 volts. When I change this to 57 volts the braking always works properly. I haven't changed the values for battery cutoff, start and end but for a 10 cell battery pack, you probably want a higher value in order to make your battery last longer. I would say change the cutoff start to 35 volts and cutoff end to 33 volts. In order to save your changed configuration, press right configuration at the bottom and then reboot at the top. You'll notice the LED lights flashing on the VESC when rebooting. If you want to continue working on the VESC, then click on Connect and Read Configuration. Otherwise, you may disconnect and enjoy the ride.
Next, we want to run a detection test to check the motor connect connection and its values. For this, press BLDC on the right side and click on Start Detection at the bottom. This will make the motor spin shortly and show the de detection results after that. Apply these values at the top and press Right Configuration to save them. In order to have a smooth acceleration, go to Advanced and check your settings under Startup Boost. This is my current setting and I'm very happy with it. Leave all the other settings as default, but you may play with this one. Keep in mind that your acceleration is also affected by your battery and your motor max value as shown in the beginning. Under App Configuration, you choose which type of remote you have. I'm using the winning W2. At the beginning, I had a problem which made the motor go on full speed when the connection to the remote was cut off, either due to battery loss, uh, connection issues to the VESC and battery, or simply when I turn off the remote. I found out that this was caused because my app configuration was set to PPM and UART. I managed to fix this by changing this to no app or uh, choosing PPM worked also.